This video is to help make learning to drive easier. It's not about how to actually drive a manual car. There's a link to how to drive a manual car in the top right hand corner of your screen. And I also have a video on how to drive an automatic car on this channel if you wanna search for that. But this video is to help make learning to drive easier, less stressful, and more productive. The first thing you can do to make learning to drive easier is to accept. Accept you're gonna do things wrong. Accept you're probably gonna stall if you're learning a manual car. Accept that you're gonna be slow. Accept that you're gonna hold people up and most likely make some people angry. Also accept that you're gonna be a bit nervous and you may be a bit shaky. It's very normal for learner drivers who are learning manual to have a shaky leg on the clutch as they try to learn clutch control. Your driving instructor is not gonna judge you for that. They're used to seeing that, it's just normal for them. If you approach your driving lessons with the expectation that it's all gonna go swimmingly well, you're never gonna put a foot wrong, you're gonna learn really quickly in a very short period of time, that's very rarely the case and will likely just lead to disappointment. It's going to put more pressure on you, which is gonna increase your anxiety levels. And it does not matter how long you've been driving, you're going to make people angry on the road because so many people use driving as a way to vent their frustrations on strangers because they know they can shout at random people and never get anything back. So it's normal for people to wave their arms and start shouting. Just this morning, actually, I was driving down the road, doing nothing wrong, car coming the other way, stopped on their side of the road, I was on my side of the road, he started putting his arms in the air, started waving, getting all angry. And I thought, well, what's going on now? What's happened here? So drove past him, looked in my mirror to see what was going on, and he parked where I was driving. So he got angry with me for driving on a bit of road that he happened to want to park on at that moment in time, even though, you know, it's my priority to be driving on that side of the road. Doesn't matter how long you've been driving, people are gonna get angry with you. So accept it and not care about it. Many learner drivers make the mistake of trying to over control the car. They're really firm with their grip on the steering wheel and they feel they've got to be on the pedals all the time or something drastic's gonna happen. But in fact, I'm gonna come off both the pedals now in third gear and not a lot's happening. It's staying fairly stable. It's slowing down gradually and it's gonna to get to the bottom of the gear, which in this car is about 11 miles an hour in third and then pull me along. And if your car doesn't pull you along, it won't just suddenly conk out. It will struggle a bit and give you a bit of warning. So now I'm gonna use the gas to carry on. And I don't need to have a death grip on the steering wheel. I can let go of the wheel and the car's going in a straight line. I don't recommend you let go of the wheel, but all I'm saying is, is you don't have to be always controlling everything the car does. Let the car do most of the work and just guide it. So you've got to be a bit more of a shepherd. You guide the car, you let the car do most of the work and put small inputs, gentle inputs to make sure you go where you want to go. I highly recommend that you listen to your driving instructor and try your best to use the methods that they are teaching you. Different driving instructors have different ways of teaching what is essentially the same thing, and that is to learn to drive and pass your driving test. But if your driving instructor is trying to teach you method A, but you're insisting on trying to do method B, your instructor and yourself aren't gonna be cooperating and working together and your instructor is not very likely to move you on until you achieve the method they're trying to teach you. For example, some instructors hate dry steering, others accept it. If your driving instructor doesn't want you doing dry steering, try not to do dry steering. However, if you really don't trust your driving instructor's methods, instead of continuing with the same instructor and trying to get them to accept your own methods, just change instructor until you find an instructor who teaches you the way you want to be taught. Also, if you have an instructor who's pushing you too hard, kind of like this. Mr. Turner the Learner, must you drive so slowly? But whenever I go faster, I start weaving from left to right. I need more practice at this lower speed to get used to it. Oh, steer properly then. Stop diddy daddling, come on. Chop, chop. Or if you feel they're holding you back, again, it's best to change instructor 
instead of trying to change the way your instructor teaches you. It's better to be slow when you start learning. And that's because learning to drive is a skill. And the best way to learn a skill is to do it slowly but well to begin with and let practice and experience bring speed. If you try to do things quickly before you've learned to do them well, what can happen is you fall into this cycle of doing it wrong repeatedly, which leads to frustration. And it's for this reason that it's very important to start your learning in a place that is appropriate. You should be in a quiet area where there's not much traffic with a low speed limit and where you can pull over at the side of the road regularly to allow you to learn how to start the car, stop the car, and learn how to control your direction with the steering, which, although it sounds easy for many, keeping the car in a straight line does take quite a lot of practice. During the early stages of learning to drive, it's quite normal for your driving instructor to drive you to a suitable location. Now you may think this is a waste of your time and your money towards your driving lesson, but on the contrary, it's not. It's good use of your time because you're gonna get much better use out of the time you spend in this location which is suitable for learning to drive than driving wherever you happen to live, which may be not only completely unsuitable, but also unsafe. A good tip, if you want to save money, is to meet your driving instructor in the location where you're gonna be learning. That way you get the maximum amount of time in the area and get the best value for money. Never underestimate how important the location is when it comes to doing your driving lessons. If you need to learn how to move and stop a car, you need long straights, hardly any parked cars and hardly any junctions, lots of places to pull over as well. If you're learning left turns, you need lots of left turns. And if you're learning roundabouts, well, you guessed it, you need lots of roundabouts. And if you think throwing someone in at the deep end is a great way of learning, well, I can tell you from experience, that's rarely the case. If you take someone who's never been swimming, push them in the deep end of the pool, they're more likely to develop a fear of water than they are good swimming skills. And the same is true with driving. If you take someone who's never been driving and get them on busy roads straight away, they're more likely to develop a fear of driving and learn to hate driving very quickly than they will develop good driving skills. I know there are cases where people do succeed this way, but from my experience of all the people I've taught and give lessons to, that's less than 10% of the population. I find it's better to learn one step at a time. So if you're struggling to move the car or struggling to change gear, it's better to sort that out first before you try and master basic junctions. I also find leaving reversing to near the end of my pupils training much better. It's much more time efficient. They spend less time learning how to reverse near the end of the training than they do if I do it near the beginning or even in the middle of the training. In fact, the later I leave reversing, the less time it takes because the more skill my pupil already has. If you're trying to teach someone to reverse near the beginning of the training, not only are they trying to learn how to use the mirrors and the steering to guide the car where they need to go and where they need to look. They're also trying to learn the pedals as well. And that's quite difficult for a new driver. If I do reversing near the end, another positive is at the beginning of their training, we can solely focus on how to drive the car and how to use the road. So it accelerates progress in both areas. Well, if you think this video helps, please give it a thumbs up and check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you want to insure yourself on a friend or family member's car, you can do so with Collingwood and it won't affect their policy. It won't risk their no claims bonus and it will take away some of the stress of someone supervising you to learn to drive in their car. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. Using the link does support this channel. And if you want to insure your own car, check out Confused.com. With Confused.com, you can fill out one quote and get many, many prices back from different insurers. And what's great about Confused is you can change the car many times on that one quote without having to do the whole of the quote form again. So you can compare how much it costs to insure all the different cars. There's a link in the description. Again, using that does support this channel. Um, I have Facebook and Instagram now, which I'm uploading to regularly. I'm trying to upload questions and answers on there. So I'll give you a scenario, say whose priority it is, and then you can try and answer and I'll give the answer 
later in the comments. If you want my future videos, please subscribe. Oh yeah, and Facebook and Instagram is Conquer Driving. They're both just Conquer Driving. And until the next one, cheerio.